Hello, welcome to the first episode of the Productivity Tip Series. I'm Rob van den Acker. Today I would like to tell you about tracking numbers in personal information management. I have been using these marvels for many years and they help me a lot in my efforts to stay organized. Numbers are often used to track things and documents and even people. For instance, parcels have tracking numbers, invoices are often linked to order numbers and people have social security numbers. However, in a knowledge worker's environment the use of identifying numbers is not very common. I use tracking numbers in an international R&D environment in communications with co-workers, internal customers and external partners. In this clip I want to demonstrate the use of these tracking numbers. During the course of a project, like for instance writing a report for a customer, a lot of related documents are generated. At the start you have correspondence with the customer about the scope of the project, the quotations, the contracts and the invoicing. Before you can start writing you need to gather information by for instance brainstorming, collecting literature and discussion with specialists. When the draft report is finished you can have a review and approval cycle generating again more documents. It is not always easy to retrieve all documents related to the project, especially if you have many projects running in parallel. I will demonstrate the use of document tracking numbers using the following short workflow. Write a draft report, email the report to reviewers to ask for their comments, organize a meeting to discuss the comments and after the review cycle collect comments from emails, telephone notes, meeting notes and hard copies and finally update the report. The principle of using tracking numbers is simple. Add a unique number to all related documents. In this case we start by adding a number to the draft report. There are several ways of generating unique numbers. You can make them by just typing in a couple of random digits. In another episode I will show you how a number can be generated and pasted by using a great program called AutoHotkey. But for now, I derive the number manually by putting together the year, the month, the day and the time. Now it starts getting more interesting. When you send the report to the reviewers, you want to trace all return comments and discussions. Therefore, add the tracking number to the body of the email. My experience is that recipients do not notice this number because it is meaningless for them and nearly all will reply to the email leaving in the original body of the email containing the tracking number. Now when you send out something you want response on, it is always good to set a reminder for yourself. There are several ways of setting reminders and I use Outlook tasks for this. To create a task, simply drag the email from the Send Items folder to the Tasks folder. An Outlook task will be automatically generated with the title, the contents and, of course, the tracking number. An Outlook task is not only useful as a reminder for this unfinished work, but you can also use it to store notes related to the project, like actions you have taken, and notes you have made during telephone calls. After sowing the tracking numbers, the time comes to harvest the fruit. In this example, the Outlook task would remind me to start working on the report again. When I set myself behind the desk, I quickly want to find the report, the comments, the meeting minutes and the notes I made. To find back documents using a tracking number, you need a desktop search application. The advantage of a desktop search application is that search results are returned in a few seconds no matter how many files you have stored on your computer. If you have Windows 7 or Windows Vista you won't even need any extra software because the functionality is already built in. If you use Windows XP you can download free desktop search applications like Microsoft Windows Search or Google Desktop. Mac users can try Spotlight. In this example I entered the tracking number in Windows Desktop Search. 
if you have correctly configured your search application, it does not really matter where you store the files because it can search in Microsoft Outlook, on your hard drive and on the local area network. Here are the draft report, the email I sent with requests for comments and the invitation for the review meeting. Here are the comments I received and the meeting minutes. I also noticed that Peter had sent me comments on the meeting minutes. When emails came in during the review cycle, I only briefly scanned them to see if they perhaps contained questions that need to be answered. If the emails only contained comments, I would directly move them to my archive folder, knowing that when the time comes to work on the report, I can find the comments back easily. Moving emails I'm not working on helps me keeping my inbox uncluttered. Here is a task that reminded me to restart working on the report and also contains some notes. As you can see, I have everything together to start updating the report. In this example, I use the tracking number to retrieve a set of related documents, but you can also use the number to find back a single file. You probably also receive a lot of documents you do not need at this moment, but you would like to store because they could be useful in the near future like, for instance, articles, price lists, information from suppliers, or, in this example, a guideline. You may be tempted to make a print of a document and put it in a hard copy folder with a title like Interesting Stuff. But you have probably already experienced that these kind of folders rapidly grow in size and, moreover, in a couple of months the items are already obsolete. So how can you use tracking numbers for storing and retrieving interesting documents for possible future use. First, add a tracking number to the subject line of the email. If you are also a fan of David Allen's Getting Things Done time management system, you may already have a number of lists with, for instance, action items and waiting for items. In this example, I have an Excel list with references to interesting documents. I add a short description of the file and the tracking number and remove the email from my inbox folder. And again, it does not matter if I store the email in a Microsoft Outlook environment or on a network drive. I also do not have to bother to put it in, for instance, a well-defined reference article folder because if I look at my interesting document list and find the tracking number, I can find the article back wherever it is stored using the desktop search application. I copy the number. paste it in desktop search and here is the document. I hope you enjoyed this episode about tracking numbers and look forward seeing you again with one of my other episodes on productivity tips.